Here is the answer key for 11.1 .1 part one assignment. So pause the video if you need to look at that more closely. Today we're going to talk about the natural number E. The natural number E is a number that was discovered by Leonard Euler a long time ago when I, I could go into the details of where this number came from. But basically what you need to know is E is a number kind of like pi. It has a value. It's a decimal that keeps on going forever and ever. Um, just like we approximate pi as 3.14, we approximate E as 2.71828. So about 2.72 is pi, or is, is E approximately. And there is a button on your calculator. On your calculator, I want you to find the button that says LN. And above that button is E to the X. E to the X and LN are very related to each other. They're inverses of each other. That's why they are always together on the calculator. So if you can find your log button, your LN button, E is above your LN button. And most calculators are written in a way so that it's E to the X. So when I push second and then my LN button, it gives me E to the something and I can type in what I want that to be. So for part A, we want to do e to the second, so e squared. So in my calculator, I type in e squared. It is 7.389, and notice three places after the decimal. Part B, they want us to do e raised to the negative one. So we try that in our calculator. e raised to the negative one is 0.368. E to the 0.25 is 1.284. E to the 3 fourths. If you are using a scientific calculator, when you get E, it probably looks like this in your calculator. You would want to type in 3 divided by 4, close your parentheses, and then hit equal. On these graphing calculators, it already pops you up into the exponent, so you can do that 3 divided by 4. But you can also, in a graphing calculator, type in parentheses 3 divided by 4 just to make yourself feel better that you've contained that fraction. And it is 2.117. Okay, we'll go through the graph of f of x to the e really quickly. Um, basically, I just want you to see that it is just like any other exponential growth or decay function. So e to the x looks like an exponential growth function. If we go into the table to get some points, so this is y equals e to the x. Here's my table of values. Negative one. The thing about e functions is that these numbers are not fun to graph because they are decimals. So negative 2.14 is there-ish. Negative 1.401, um, 1, 2.7, and 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.4. There's your exponential growth function. Still has an asymptote on the x-axis. Um, we talked yesterday about growth and decay. E is basically 2.72, so this is always going to be a growth function unless there is a negative in the exponent. That negative in the exponent is going to flip that around. So then I will type in E to the negative X and let you see what that graph looks like. See how that red graph is just exactly mirrored? So you could even come over here and like mirror this if you wanted to. There's e to the negative x. And transformations would work exactly the same. So if we did e to the x plus 2 with a plus 2 up in the exponent, that would move the graph left 2. If we did e to the x and then not in the exponent did plus 3, that would move the whole graph up 3 and then its asymptote would be at three. So the transformations that we talked about in the previous video all still apply when you're talking about graphing functions with E. How we really use E is in this continuous compounding formula. Um, 
this is like financial problems. So you've got money and actually you can see example three kind of down below. You've got money invested at an annual interest rate of 8%. Find the balance after seven years based on how it's compounded. So A is your amount earned. I like to think of A as our ending amount after that many years. P is the principal invested. That is your starting amount. That's the amount that you put into the account in the first place. R is your interest rate written as a decimal. So remember, if you have something like 8%, that is 0.08. You move the decimal point to the right or to the left two places. And the other thing that you can think about is that percent actually means out of 100. So if you don't remember how to convert percents into decimals, if it's 8%, that means 8 out of 100, and that would give you that correct decimal. So when in doubt, put your percent over 100 in your calculator, and that will give you your decimal. And T is the number of years. So, um, Oh, and then N. N is if you're compounding like quarterly, monthly, daily, weekly. N is how many times per year you are compounding. So it, that says right up here, N compounds per year, and then N is in that formula. So keep that formula handy. $11,000 is, is invested at an annual interest rate of 8%. $11,000 is our starting amount. That is our P. 8 is our interest rate. That is going to be 0.08. 7 years, that is our T. And then compounded quarterly, for quarterly, N is 4. So here's how this formula would look. Your ending amount is going to be your starting amount, 1 plus your rate, divided by how many times per year you're compounding, raised to the nt. That n has to divide the rate and be up in that exponent with the time. And then you just type this in basically exactly as you see it. So 11,000 parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4, close your parentheses, raised to the, in scientific calculators, I would put parentheses around this, 4 times 7. You want to make sure that that 4 times 7 gets multiplied before it's used as the exponent. So put parentheses around that exponent just for good measure. This is 19,151 and 27 cents. Please keep in mind that we are talking about US dollars and cents. That means we put the dollar sign in front of the answer and we put two numbers after the decimal place. So look at your number 2.66, that second six tells us to bump it up to 27 cents. Okay, monthly, we're gonna do the same thing, except monthly means that N is 12. So take a moment and try typing that into your calculator. I'll pause the video, pause the video, type it into your calculator, see what you get. Do look at your answers and think about do they make sense. Um, the first time I typed this in, I got 70,000 as my answer, and that is not right. There's no way that after seven years, $11,000 could become $70,000. I had forgotten to do the divided by 12 in the formula. That drastically changed things. So glance at your answers and think, does this make sense? Just to make sure that you didn't make a mistake somewhere. $19,221.64. So notice this is a little bit more than when we compounded quarterly. Compounding monthly means at the end of the month, they calculate how much interest you have, you've earned, added into the account. The next month, they calculate again on your new amount and add it in. So if you're compounding more frequently, you're going to earn more money from that interest. Compounded continuously. The biggest question I get is, well, what is N if it says continuously? Like, do I use like 10,000? Do I use a million? That's kind of where E came from. If you see the word continuously, that means that you're going to use what many of us refer to as the PERT 
formula. So if you look back at this formula list, n compounds per year, you use this formula with the divided by n and the nt. If it says continuous, that keyword is continuous, continuously, you're going to use this PERT formula, P-E to the R-T. So we would do 11,000 E raised to the 0 0.08 times 7. So 11,000, find your E, 0 0.08 times 7, close those parentheses, 19,000. 257 and 40 cents. Don't forget your label. So notice compounded continuously earns you even more over those seven years. The more you compound, the more money you're going to earn from that interest. Okay, example four. Um, I want you to try this one on your own. So pause the video, give it a try, and then play the video to check yourself. Pause the video. I don't think you paused it. I think you need to pause the video. Make sure you pause the video. Give it a try. Okay, so we've got $10,000. That's our P. 6.25%. That's our rate. We have to change that to a decimal. And it says compounded continuously. That means that we are going to use the PERT formula. So we're going to be using A equals P E to the RT. And then how much money will you have on your 18th birthday? Your 18th birthday, that's 18 years. So your T would be 18. So your amount is going to be 10,000 E, 6.25% as a decimal is 0 0.0625 times 18 years. 10,000, make sure you get enough zeros in there. E to the 0 0.0625 times 18. This is another one where checking your answer would be good because if you get something that's just totally nuts, um, that might be a sign that you missed a zero or forgot a zero or added too many zeros or whatever. This says that we are going to have $30,802.17. Okay, now we do, like, when I look at this problem, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. But how many grandparents really deposit $10,000 in a trust fund for you? That's, that's not very common. The other thing that is super unrealistic about this problem is this percentage rate. Banks don't give you 6.25%. Banks give you, like, point. 5% or 1% or it, having a 6.25% interest rate is completely unrealistic. No bank is going to give you that. Now, if you're borrowing money from the bank, they will absolutely give you a 6.25% interest rate or higher because that's in their benefit. But if it's benefiting you, they're not going to give you that high of an interest rate. Okay, here's your assignment. Um, notice on number 48, and number 50, those are graphing problems with E. You just need to describe the transformation. So think about 11.1 part one, everything we learned about transformations in that section. On 48 and 50, just describe the transformation. You don't need to graph. Uh, make sure you do those others. Um, email your teacher, me or whatever teacher you have if you're another um, class. Email us with questions. We are glad to help. Hope you're doing well.